live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. We've reached the point where enough is enough. We've established January 10th as a strike date. We begin with developing news tonight. L.A. teachers have drawn the proverbial line in the sand. They want to deal or they will walk. LAUSD is facing the possibility of its first teacher strike in 30 years. The drastic measure would affect hundreds of thousands of students right after they return from holiday break. And CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen is live at Silver Lake with reaction from parents and details on this impasse. Jeff. Well, Pat and Jeff, at campuses like this one, students are on winter break, but if a contract dispute isn't resolved soon, kids will only go back to school for a few days before their parents need to figure out where to go next. Louise Bennett says she and a group of LAUSD families have been preparing for a possible teacher strike by ironing out an emergency child care plan. Get more people together to take care of the kids and you know, take turns watching them. The possibility seems more likely unless a deal is struck between the LA School District and the United Teachers Los Angeles Union. We will strike on January 10th unless we see an addressing of the crucial issues that shape education. The threat comes one day after the release of a fact finders report that made recommendations including a 6% raise, which the superintendent said was agreed upon by both sides. Our students aren't waiting. Our families aren't waiting. But UTLA insists that was not true. This past weekend, about 50,000 teachers and their supporters took part in a march following 20 months of contract negotiations. Teachers say there is more to the impasse than pay. They say they're overwhelmed because their class sizes are too big. So we don't have our nurse 100 percent of the time. We don't have uh, enough counselors. We don't have enough psychologist. The district says the teacher's proposal would increase the half billion dollar deficit, but the union says the LAUSD needs to tap into its nearly two billion dollar reserve, while parents say more needs to be invested at campuses like King Middle School in Silver Lake. You know, and when it rains, they don't know where to go because the teacher, there's not enough teachers or people who are there to open spaces for them to sit and eat. The district says that it wants to reiterate what the superintendent said yesterday, which is he does not want to see a strike. Both sides have accused the other of negotiating in bad faith. A strike could be avoided if a deal is worked out before January 10th. Live in Silver Lake, Jeff Nguyen, CBS 2 News. We'll Thank continue. you, Jeff. I'm sorry, Pat. All right. Well, Arroyo Elementary School added grief counselors today as people mourn the laws of a beloved Simi Valley crossing guard. Yeah, 62 year old Susan Burke was killed yesterday at the intersection of Socrates and Los Angeles Avenue. She was filling in on another shift when she was run down during that three car crash. Friends and a fellow crossing guard hugged and cried this morning. My children are very upset. I'm upset. I feel for her family. I think uh, we're all in a hurry and we just need to slow down a little bit. Yeah, Burke is the second crossing guard to be hit by a car in Simi Valley in just two months. The other guard suffered brain damage. Meanwhile, there is an arrest in the deadly hit and run of another crossing guard. 82 year old Joseph Arroyo is accused of running down and killing Leonard Ortiz October 16th. Now, police say Arroyo ran a red light before hitting Ortiz, who was on a scooter at the time. Ortiz was a popular crossing guard with the Redlands School District. The Orange County woman accused of scamming people by soliciting donations for firefighters on the front lines of the Holy Fire was apparently so good at fooling people, she was even featured on the Dr. Phil show. And CBS2 Orange County reporter Michelle Geely is live in Santa Ana with more information on this woman's alleged scams. Michelle. Well, Pat, she sits in a jail cell here behind me at the Women's Central Jail in Santa Ana. And you are right. She was on the Dr. Phil show telling Dr. Phil that she wasn't trying to profit off of the holy fire by pretending that she was married to a firefighter and soliciting donations for him and his crew. Officials today are saying that she has scammed people before. Would you like the help of an attorney today, Ms. Phoenix? Yes. The San Juan Capistrano woman, who's accused of collecting donations for firefighters, but then kept them for herself, has now been arrested and charged with 35 criminal counts. 
Ashley Bemis, well known to Facebook users for creating a fictitious profile as the wife of a firefighter and soliciting help during the Holy Fire, was handcuffed and put in a deputy's car Tuesday. As she creates a fake profile, she she creates a fake persona, she finds fake pictures, adds uh, a fake name to a fireman that doesn't exist anywhere in the United States, um, goes through this whole process of creating this this um, fraudulent lifestyle and then talks about how Cal Fire is out and it's a horrible place and they're ill-equipped. The 27-year-old is the same woman, officials say, who duped other people. Bemis is accused of faking more than a half dozen pregnancies, posing for photos with a homemade baby bump. People from church threw Ashley Bemis a shower after she allegedly told them that her husband and other children had been killed in a car crash. The South Orange County woman even posted pictures with children who she babysat, claiming they were her own. And that's what landed her in the hot seat on the Dr. Phil show last month. She was claiming your son was her child. She is a disgusting human being. Dr. Phil got some answers from Bemis after she posed as the firefighter's wife. I think I was trying to make it more believable that I was trying to honestly help. It's a loss of public trust, and that is something that's hard to get back. Even if we give individuals their money back, that loss of trust that they feel in donating when there's a natural disaster is something that we want the public to be aware of so it doesn't happen again. Bemis is being held on $50,000 bail. She's also charged with witness intimidation. The DA says that she confronted people who posted on her Facebook page that they thought that maybe this was not legitimate. She apparently sent those people cease and desist letters. That's the latest live in Santa Ana. I'm Michelle Geely. Back to you. Now to high-level resignation today in the L.A. Archdiocese. An auxiliary bishop once accused of misconduct is leaving his post. 69-year-old Alexander Salazar taking an early retirement. He was previously accused of misconduct involving a minor back in the 1990s. Archdiocese reports allegation was investigated. No charges were ever filed. And Salazar denied any wrongdoing. Now Pope Francis accepted Salazar's resignation today. And developing news on Wall Street, the Dow fell to its lowest level of the year after the Federal Reserve raised interest rates for the fourth time this year. The Dow was up 381 points before the interest rate hike. It fell 351 after the hike to close at 23,353. The Nasdaq was down 147 points and the S&P 500 lost 39. Now to this story, a new privacy scandal for Facebook. Yeah, that social media yeah. giant reportedly secretly gave other companies extensive access to your personal data. Juan Fernandez, just how long did this go on? Well, Pat and Jeff, the New York Times says it went on for a long time. The article claims hundreds of millions of users a month had no idea their personal and private data was being secretly mined and shared publicly. Last April, CEO Mark Zuckerberg told Congress the data of Facebook's more than 2 billion users is safe. Yes or no, is Facebook limiting the amount or type of data Facebook itself collects or uses? Congressman, yes, we limit a lot of the data that we collect and use. But according to a new report in the New York Times, for years, Facebook struck deals to share users' personal data with more than 150 companies, including Netflix, Spotify, and Amazon. Among the allegations in the report, Facebook allowed Spotify, Netflix, and the Royal Bank of Canada to read, write, and delete users' private messages. Amazon was able to obtain users' names and contact information through their friends. And Microsoft's Bing was able to see the names of virtually all Facebook users' friends without consent. Privacy issues, security breaches, and the distribution of fake news has plagued Facebook for months. The scandals have forced Zuckerberg and Chief Operating Officer Sheryl Sandberg to publicly apologize. We know that we did not do a good enough job protecting people's data. And I'm really sorry for that, and Mark's really sorry for that. Well, in a statement, Facebook told CBS News, participating partners don't get to ignore people's privacy settings, and it's wrong to suggest that they do. But this could go beyond bad PR, and here's why. A 2011 settlement with the Federal Trade Commission requires Facebook to get users' consent before sharing their information. 
A Facebook spokesperson told The Times most of its partners did not require that consent because Facebook considered those corporate partners extensions of itself. Already today, the Attorney General in Washington, D.C. sued Facebook for privacy violations. Pat and Jeff. That's a lot to uh, decipher. Thank you there, Juan. The holiday travel rush officially began about 10 minutes ago. We'll tell you why it's expected to be a record setter. Uh, you want to see LAX, I don't think, right? <laughs> Plus, a police pursuit ends when a driver slams into a trolley. We'll tell you why so many deputies swarm to the scene. And we're getting a look outside right now. The sun setting over Southern California and a serious warm up on our hands. I'll have your full forecast ahead. <laughs> Hey, Garth. Hey. Oh, hey. Okay, you can stop yelling, go in my ear. I hear you guys. It's crazy here. Hey, the Sierra Vista High School Vocal Ensemble will be playing. I got it right. Coming up, we got a huge amount of toys here. Check back, see what's going on. The big elf is at it.